Now I've been sitting on this build for quite some time, in fact it's one that I came across at the start of last season when we got the final set of aspects and fragments for the stasis subclass. I'm going to go as far as saying right now that I think this build will take you a long way through Grandmasters this season and could be a somewhat essential piece of the Fireteam Jigsaw puzzle in endgame content. Aga's Scepter finally got its exotic catalyst and this is the first real video I've done on it aside from the quick YouTube short I put out showing its fast super potential. Speaking of fast supers, I personally think its synergy with the Warlock's Mantle of Battle Harmony, as good as it is, is overrated as it really narrows its build potential. Let's start with the Scepter though. Aga's Call is the exotic perk, whereby final blows generate a slowing burst around a defeated target. This will freeze all enemies nearby in PvE and just slow opponents in PvP if you're a trace rifle connoisseur. Stasis final blows will partially refill the magazine too with the Riga's Refrain perk. This build isn't 100% centred around using its catalyst but I'd highly recommend getting it, which is a random chance drop from the chest at the end of the astral alignment activity. Will Given Form is the bonus perk granted by the Catalyst which allows you to hold the reload button when your super is full to overcharge the magazine. This will instantly start to reduce your super bar over time but it'll also overflow the magazine and boost the damage output of the exotic by 80%. Consistent damage will now also slow and freeze the target on top of the slowing burst when defeating targets as well. So this build is all about becoming a stasis tank, whilst recharging your abilities and super enabling you to deal with large areas of enemies easily and it's also flexible enough to take champions into account too. So first, the stasis subclass setup for the shade binder. The aspects and fragments we'll be using all allow the maximum uptime for the maximum damage resistance and over shields. Glacial harvest is the main aspect I want to use with the Aga's scepter. Freezing targets create stasis shards around frozen targets, higher tier combatants create more shards. This will instantly proc from Aga's freezing ability whether in its normal or overcharged state and allows you to create an absolute ton of these shards that at the base level will grant you melee energy when collected. Remember there is a slight cap and cooldown for the harvest aspect but it'll still allow for the maximum impact of these shards via the fragments we will be using. Ice Flare Bolts is still top tier and will allow you to spawn seekers from both Aggers and your abilities when shattering frozen targets. Whisper of Hedrons has fast become one of my favourite stasis fragments and especially when used with this exotic, because it's pretty much always active, giving you a 30 stat bump to your mobility, resilience and recovery as well as the weapon handling benefits it offers when freezing a target with stasis. It allows you to not max out these stats on your armor too, giving you options for more stat diversity. Whisper of Chains is going to grant you a huge 25% damage reduction when near to frozen targets or friendly stasis crystals. As you'll always be freezing everything, this will pretty much always be active and is the first part of this stasis tank setup. When defeating these frozen targets, you can then use the Whisper of Refraction to grant class ability energy as well, massively reducing your rift cooldown. Lastly, the Whisper of Rhyme will grant you a stasis overshield when collecting stasis shards. These fall off after 10 seconds but can be refreshed each time you collect a shard. This combines with chains to allow you to move through encounters with excellent damage resistance and bonus health. This all sets us up for the final part of the tank build with the exotic warlock helmet, the Stag. This has easily become the meta warlock exotic of choice this season and for one very good reason. Not only does its daily departed intrinsic perk grant you rift energy when critically wounded or cast one when you die, but it also now grants you and allies a huge damage resistance when standing in a rift. This is a 25% damage reduction in PvE or a 15% reduction in PvP, but the thing is it actually stacks with the Whisper of Chains fragment too. When standing in a rift you'll get the resist times 2 perk which counts down alongside your rift timer. If you throw a glacier grenade or freeze a target nearby, this will bump up to resist times 3. So not only are you getting the constant health regen and overshield from a healing rift, but you're now able to tank damage to an insane extent. And with this whole setup, even without the mods that we're yet to get into, you can essentially have multiple rifts in a single area granting you this damage resistance as you jump between them. 
but before we get into the mod you'll need to max out this incredible stasis build if you're new here and enjoying the content please hit the subscribe button i aim to make the end game of destiny 2 accessible to everyone with a variety of builds and guides so that you too can get that sweet loot every like is always appreciated and really helps me out too I've also got a Discord server you can join to speak with other members of the community. Check out the link below in the description. So as for the mod setup, we're playing with a ton of Elemental Well mods as these are just so strong right now. Elemental Armaments is the main mod we'll be using to create stasis wells on final blows with Aga's Scepter. Collecting these wells will grant energy to all of your abilities but will also reduce your super cooldown with the Font of Wisdom mod. Well of Potency will grant you super energy when collecting them too and the Font of Might will grant you a 25% stasis weapon damage bonus as well. Elemental Light will also create them on super final blows but this mod is kind of a placeholder right now for one that we're yet to get our grubby mitts on with the Elemental Shards mod from the Wayfinder's Compass which will essentially turn stasis shards into Elemental Wells causing all types of broken with this build. I'd highly recommend using Trace Rifle, Ammo Finder and Scavenger Mod though as using this like a primary will eat your ammo like there's no tomorrow. Chuck in whatever mods you've got space left for, with hands on being great for more super energy and insulation granting class ability energy when collecting orbs of power. I've also got the Particle Deconstruction mod equipped so that I can make use of it with a heavy linear fusion rifle. Reed Regret is my baby right now and it will also benefit from the Font of Might damage buff to help delete bosses. You can also use the Unstoppable Fusion mod for anti-champion content. As for your energy weapon, like I said you can use bows, autos or pulse rifles for endgame champion content covering off with the Overload, Barrier or Unstoppable mods from the artifact. Wolf Tone's draw has been a favourite pairing of mine in this build though to be honest. Now I've got to say that this build is massively overkill in your everyday content like strikes, gambit and other playlist activities, but once you master its flow, you'll be near unstoppable in endgame content like Master and Grandmaster Nightfalls and even the Master Vault of Glass Raid. It allows you to trivialise most encounters, freezing huge waves of adds with any of those enemies who are still going, unable to do any real damage to you due to the immense damage resistance stacks you have with the stag and chains combo. You can deal huge damage with the exotics overcharged ability freezing champions and bosses instantly in their spot, then switch to your heavy to do the heavy lifting. Infinite Rifts are the order of the day here, and within a fire team you'll be a huge benefit, keeping everyone alive. If you really want to push the boat out, you can use an empowering rift or even have another guardian run stag to complement this in maybe an arc buddy setup. You could implement this setup with titans and hunters too, so please go ahead and experiment, that's the whole reason I do these builds. If you did enjoy this build video, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe if you're new. Share it with your friends also and let me know your thoughts about Aga's Scepter down in the comments. I've been Truds, that's it for this one, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time.